God, I don't know if this is gonna fit. Yes, I did just spend the last five hours getting ready for a Met Gala that's not happening and that I wasn't invited to in the first place. The Met Gala 2020 was supposed to be this past week. Obviously it was postponed, but seeing all of the celebrities post throwback photos really got me in the mood to get red carpet ready for no reason at all. If you're new here, hi, my name is Miranda. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things budget beauty. If that sounds interesting to you, then become the newest member of the Slashed Squad by hitting subscribe and the bell icon. All right, we're doing a head to toe transformation today. Let's start with makeup. Y'all know I don't usually wear primer on the daily, but if it comes to a special event, I will. So today I'm going in with the Physician's Formula Natural Defense Protect Your Prime Oil. This is a lightweight priming oil that really helps smooth everything out, give you a glow, and it has SPF in it. For foundation today, I'm using the Believe Beauty Skin Finish Foundation. Oh, oh, I realized that I didn't like shave my mustache, so <laughs> just doing a little checky check to see if we were gonna have to go back in. Let's brighten up these under eyes using the e.l.f. Camo Concealer, the hydrating version. Since this has come out, I have not used the matte version of this concealer at all. The hydrating formula is just so much more flattering on my under eye. Going into my AOA Studio Perfect Powder, I'm actually gonna bake just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and press that under my eye. And I'm also gonna put that in my laugh lines. It's where I crease the most. And up here. While I let this powder sit and look like a complete crazy person, I'm gonna be doing my brows with the BH Cosmetics Brow Duo. It's just a little powder compact. I'm really liking this stuff. Now, in terms of the Met Gala's theme about time and how fashion and beauty trends tend to reemerge years later with, you know, a little spin on them, I wanted to let that inspire me to do sort of like an old Hollywood starlet type of look today, but with some modern touches. I'm digging the brows today. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and brush this powder off. Pores who? Let's get started on the eyes. I'm gonna be priming with my MAC Paint Pot. This product does not quit. I've had it for so long and I'm barely putting a dent in it, although mm, I might hit pan soon, I'm not sure. I'm gonna try to use the Carity Picante Palette, which I did choose in my Shop My Stash. Mostly warm neutrals in this palette, but I think we'll be able to get that old Hollywood vibe, hopefully. First things first, I'm gonna go into Delia here to set my base. I'm gonna go into Dish right here. It's sort of like a brown with pink undertones and that's going in the transition area. Now going into Bittersweet, which is a warm dark brown and I am gonna be doing a cut crease today. So I'm not gonna worry too much about what ends up on my lid. Okay, I'm gonna take our transition shade a little bit on a new brush and blend, blend, blend. All right, we've got this blended the house. While we're blending, I do wanna add my brow bone highlight. Gonna go into Fearless, which is a nice warm champagne. And then I'll just go ahead and blend to get those to fade into each other. Now I'm gonna do the cut crease. I'm a little nervous because I haven't done one in a while. And I'm gonna be going back in with the e.l.f. hydrating camo for this. I still got it. Okay, let's not speak too soon, Miranda. Still have a whole other eye to do. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and set this a little bit. Man, I would have really loved to see the celebrity looks for this theme. For the crease we just cut, I'm gonna be going into another AOA product. This is their Diamond Powder. This is in the shade Antique Pink. Oh, I'm gonna be a little bit smarter about this. I have my NYX Glitter Primer, and I'm just gonna pat that right over the cut crease so that we get a little more stick and a little less fallout. Just to make this a little easier on me later as well. I'm gonna put some setting powder under my eye to catch the glitter. There we go. Ooh, look at that impact. Okay, note to self, always use glitter primer when you're working with glitter. This eye looks so much better because I put the glitter primer on first. Miranda, how about some common sense and not shortcuts? 
I'm gonna go back into our outer corner shade and just pat it a little bit at the edge of that glitter, tugging a little bit of the glitter over the boundary. I'm gonna be using my CoverGirl Perfect Point Plus Liner, tight lining my upper lash line, and then I'm gonna be creating a little flick at the outer corner. So I'm just gonna lay down a little bit of liner and then taking a teeny tiny liner brush, I'm gonna blend that out and give it a little bit of a flick. Best believe I'm gonna be putting on falsies today, but first I'm gonna curl my lashes and I'm gonna do a base coat of mascara using the CoverGirl Flourish by Lash Blast. I didn't mean to be using so many AOA products today, but I gotta say the stuff they've been sending me recently has been hit after hit after hit, including these new premium faux mink lashes that they just came out with. Look how fluffy these are. Oh my gosh, they're nice and thick. These are part of the Paw Paw collection on AOA, which is slightly more than a dollar, but then part of the proceeds go to help animals in need. They're synthetic, but they look so fluffy and beautiful. Gonna bronze with my Koki Matte Bronzing Powder. This is the shade Heat Wave. It is quite warm. I'm gonna bring that up onto my forehead as well. And under the jawbone. Using my Makeup Obsession Isn't It Peachy Blush Palette from Target. I'm gonna go into Daydream, which is a very light peach. I don't wanna go super heavy on the face cause we kinda got a lot going on on the eyes. And using my Revlon Skin Lights Highlighter, this is the shade Twilight Gleam. Bring it on the nose and the cupid's bow. Okay, and then I'm actually just gonna take a little bit of this and put it in my inner corner. Okay, I have a couple options when it comes to the lips. I could go for the classic red, since we are trying to channel, you know, old Hollywood, but updated. Or I could go with the ColourPop Beeper shade that I pulled in my Shop My Stash that I do think matches this look pretty dang well. I'm gonna go with ColourPop. I am obsessed with how this look came out, but we are not quite done yet. Let's move on to hair. The tool I'm gonna to be using today is the Bedhead Wave Artist. It gives me pretty deep, flowy waves. I've never done this since I've had short hair, so I'm interested to see how it goes. Using my Eva NYC Main Magic Hair Primer, this is my favorite heat protectant. I started using it when I had purple hair because it helps protect the color out in the sun as well as heat tools. It gives the hair a really nice shine after it's been heat styled. Oh, there's pounce and you just clamp it within the tool and hold tight okay and then when you let go you'll see a deep wave Let's see how the deep waves end up looking this one's gonna come out really good <sighs> okay I'm gonna spare you the time that it actually takes for me to do this so uno momento Okay, um, this looks a lot different on my short hair than it did with my long hair. It's looking a little bit early 90s, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a wide tooth comb. I'm just gonna like brush through everything. Okay, I have these studded hair clips that I'm gonna use to pull this side back behind my ear. I think that'll give me a little bit more of the old Hollywood look that I was going for and not Madonna. <laughs> Maybe, okay, I think that's definitely giving me more the vibe that I was going for. I don't know if this gown is still gonna fit me. Why do they make dresses so hard to put on by yourself? I'm an independent woman. I got it, I got it. Oh, it zips, ah, it zips, ta-da. Yes, I'm so happy that this still fit. That just made my year. The quarantine 15 ain't got nothing on me. No, but seriously, I've gained like eight pounds in quarantine. <laughs> okay, so a little backstory. This is the gown that I wore to the Grammy Awards 2014. I went with CoverGirl, sat in CoverGirl's private box seats. That was probably the peak of my influencer career. Like it has not gotten cooler than that. But anyway, they gave me like a week notice and I'm like, I have nothing to wear. It's the freaking Grammy. And so I was writing emails like crazy to brands who I had worked with in the past and TJ Maxx came through. So this gown definitely serves me some old Hollywood vibes. Let me show you what it looks like down below. So here's what the bottom of the dress looks like. And I remember because of the long train, people were stepping on my dress all freaking night. Okay, I'm gonna serve you some classic Met Gala looks.
How's it going? Hi, nice to meet you. Please describe who your look tonight. Oh, it's Vera Wang for TJ Maxx. Holy cow, I am sweating. All right, well that was this video. I would really appreciate a thumbs up if you enjoyed it because it took me forever. Tell me in the comments, who is your favorite Met Gala dresser? Year after year, which celebrity do you think looks the best? Today's shout out goes to Michelle. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad and join me over in this video next where I create the perfect drugstore eyeshadow palette. I'll see you over there, bye.